Welcome to Travels and History in England. Um, this is a series dedicated to snippets of interest that Alan and I have encountered during our travels in this country. And the series runs alongside the Travel in India series, where my wife's sister, Uma, um, shares her experiences in West Bengal. Um, in this episode, I'm cycling around the Pinner area of West London to take in the spring blossoms. Cycling is a really great way to get about and to be close to the environment in which you're traveling, um, as well as being good for your health, of course. Um, but because you're close to the environment, you find things that you wouldn't see if you were traveling around in a car. And that makes a huge difference. Now, during this video, we're going to check out a couple of notable buildings and take a look at the history of the village of Pinna and how it fits into the current setup of West London. And of course, we will take in the spring blossoms on the way. So go and make yourself a tea or coffee or something stronger, then sit back and see if you're surprised at the amount of greenery that there is here in West London. Cheers. The name of the village first appears as Pinora in 1232. Aura means bank or edge and is considered to be of Saxon origin. It was one of the ten hamlets of the medieval Harrow Manor and is still the most easily distinguishable today. Near the centre it had a church on a low hill with a street of houses leading down to the River Pin from which the village derived its name, Pin Aura or Bank Hill by the Pin. At the north was woodland and a large common or green. South of the High Street was an area of large fields split up again into smaller portions. These were shared out among the villagers who cooperated so that the same crop was grown on all the plots in any one field. Today, large estates of mid 20th century houses are to be found. The two roads used by the villagers to get to their fields are still here today, Cannon Lane and Rainers Lane. Rainers Lane used to be called Bourne Lane because it crossed several streams. The land belonged to the Lord of the Manor of Harrow and the villagers had their pieces in return for rent or work done. The Lord kept some parts of Pinner for his own use, with two large farms, Woodhall and Headstone. Part of Woodhall's farmhouse is still there, as is part of Headstone's house, as well as its barn and moat, which now form the Harrow Heritage and Museum Centre. Pinner Park was a 250-acre haven for the Lord's deer. Today it's known as Hall's Farm. In 1336, King Edward III granted a fair to be held in Pinner at midsummer, the feast of its patron saint, St John the Baptist. It enabled the inhabitants to buy more exotic goods than normally available and to enjoy some revelry. The annual fair survives to this day. The arrival of the Metropolitan Railway in 1885 brought in the most major changes as it enabled Pinner people to commute to work in London, while Londoners in turn could buy a home in the country. It gave rise to developments of a new kind, as streets near the centre of Pinner were created on roadside fields sold by farmers for new housing to be built to accommodate the influx of people moving out of central London. By 1914, new neighbourhoods were appearing away from the centre of Pinner. Between the two world wars, the physical expansion of London reached Pinner and beyond. The countryside disappeared under extensive new roads and housing. New shopping centres, schools, cinemas and churches were needed. Pinner Village now tends to mean the old heart of the village, the high street and the church and the old lanes radiating from it. The village is still there, much of it recognisable to those who would have lived here centuries ago, even if it is now part of Greater London. Shut 
cut out the world in identical country boxes on a land that was ripped away from badgers, deer and foxes and we moan about the office don't value how good we are and bitch about our neighbours jealous of the big new car go on complaining about smells from the farms Mara's dancers in the pub while stray sheep cause us alarm the huge bowl of Middlesex, overlooked by Pinner Hill, was originally mentioned in the Doomsday Book as a park of wild beasts of the forests. There is a golf course and a stud farm in the area now, and horses, the only wild beasts in the locality today, are regularly to be seen grazing in the fields near to Pinner Woods. It remains one of my favourite cycling destinations. The parish church of St John the Baptist stands at the hill at the top of the Pinner High Street. But for most of its history, Pinner was not a parish, nor did it form part of the Diocese of London. Originally, it was a chapel subordinate to the ancient church of St Mary at Harrow on the Hill, forming part of the deanery of Croydon, which came under the immediate jurisdiction of the Archbishop of Canterbury. This was because the Archbishop was the Lord of the Manor of Harrow. Over the years, St John the Baptist grew independent of St Mary's in many ways, but it was not until 1766 that Pinner became a parish independent of Harrow. The village of Pinner was never of any great importance, and no wealthy or influential medieval family ever resided in the parish. As a result, the church has no elaborate architectural features, although it was built during the decorated period of Gothic architecture. It is a very simple village church. An archiepiscopal charter of the 14th century, confirming a grant made a century earlier, indicates that there was a congregation in Pinna by the 1230s, but it is difficult to tell whether any part of the present church fabric dates from that time. What we do know is that Archbishop Reynolds authorised the dedication of the existing building in 1321, and it is thought that the main structure must have been built in the early 14th century. The plan was originally of simple cruciform shape, comprising nave, aisles, chancel and transepts. The tower, south porch and the five light east window were added in the 15th century. The Lady Chapel, which was added in 1859, was dedicated by the Bishop of London in 1938. Pinna 
house is a great two-listed mansion in the middle of the village. Its facade was built in 1721, but the rest of the building was constructed at some point earlier that century. High quality early 18th century open string dog leg stairs rise to an attic inside the building. It has early 18th century doors, cupboards and fireplaces throughout. The right hand ground floor room has an early 18th century panelling and an eared fireplace architrave with elaborate frieze and cornice. The room above was also panelled. The left hand ground floor room has a reset 17th century panelling. The house was extended during the 20th century and has been used as an old people's home since the 1930s. But during the mid-19th century, the building was used as a school for children, called the Pinner House Academy. Before that, it was sold by auction in 1829, and the usage suggested before that date was as a family home. Well, I really hope you enjoyed the video and look forward to you joining us all on future travels. Watch this space for more from both me and from Alan and of course from Uma over in India. Cheers. Though I drunk the night before, I woke up feeling sober. Jumped from my hammock, grabbed a bite and went up on the deck. The captain barked his orders to keep us men in check. Told us of the battle plan, explaining its object. We turned and saw Nelson's flag saying England expects every man to do his best to annihilate the foe. And deep in every English heart, found a fire down below. There was a fire down below. There was a fire down below. Yes, in our patriotic hearts, found a fire down below.